Okay, so I have two fine connect, um, adapters right on those network pins on the ABS module. I want to rule out something internal like a bad solder joint. And the way to do that is just look at your own meter and gently manipulate these wires just back and forth, up and down, just a little bit. Our resistance is holding rock steady at 125 ohms. So the problem has to be with either the pins on the connector or the wires right next to the connector. How do we determine you know, either or? We should do a drag check with the appropriate thin pin. So right now I just have like little needles, but they might not be the exact correct diameter for these pins. These could have been spread by, you know, the last guy, who knows. Let's, uh, let's try a drag check. Alright, now I'm doing the final check here. Checking these pins on the bulk ABS connector using the appropriate adapter. So, it's these two pins second and third one in the middle row and I mean they all feel decent now you want to compare to its neighbors like these ones here it's basically tug on it and feels how much force it takes to pull that wire out so on this one that's definitely slightly looser than its neighbor. That one's pretty loose. That one's pretty loose. Let's check the ones down here. Much tighter. So I'm going to have to take this connector apart and tighten up those three pins manually. The first three in the second row. We'll plug everything back in and see if that wiggle check um, you know, if there's a steady reading now after pin tightening. So my favorite tool for connector pin stuff is just a Harbor Freight pick. So got this out, the little retainer, and then each pin is held in place by a little plastic tang. So you pull the tang down and gently push the pin out. And you can see here's the light blue and white. And take your pick and just ever so slightly, these are very small delicate pins, you want to press this part in, that's like the little spring that hugs the, the uh, male terminal and you just want to close it up and then once we reinstall this we'll do the other network wire, spray the whole thing with deoxid, I mean see there's slight green crusties on some of these pins, I'm going to clean this up also do the same on the ABS module side. Plug this in and we'll make sure that we pass that um, wiggle check with the harness. And obviously before sliding the pin back in, do the drag test outside of the connector just to make sure we put enough preload on that spring. So. You know, tug on it, and I like that. And we'll do the next one. So the second of the two network wires seems to be a little looser than the first. So again, you know, the pin almost falls out of it. There's a slight drag, but not, not much. So let's close that up too. Press that slightly in. Do a little drag test. There you go. That's much, much tighter pin fitment. And hopefully the deoxit will take care of the rest. All right, place your bets now. Connector is cleaned, deoxit. I want to see, once that pin makes contact, I want to see 125 and nothing else. So, connector is coming in here. 
130, 125, 125, still 125, still 125. I'm going to press the horn sideways. It's better. It's not dropping out. Rock steady. 126. Are we done? Let's clean up the dash connector. Plug that in. Make sure we have 60 ohms. Clear all the codes out. Owner can take this thing around the block for a spin and I'll give him a, I don't know, <laughs> taillight warranty, maybe a 10 mile warranty. No, just kidding. We'll, uh, we'll make sure this lasts at least a year until this thing uh, gets really rusty. He'll probably have other problems. All right, green crusties versus deoxid. Let's see. <laughs> we'll spray this side of the connector too. Oh yeah, nice, nice and green. Let's see here. I wish I had three hands sometimes. We'll spray these pins and maybe scrub them with a brush. The wires still look intact, it's just we don't want the green crusties to bridge the neighboring pins, especially these tiny pins. You can see they're slightly, <laughs> slightly bridging. Alright, so dash connectors plugged back in. I don't know where this little bit of water is coming from. Maybe from sunroof drains. Um, that would be tough to isolate that, but it's not a ton. But proof is in the pudding, as Erico would say. 62 ohms, rock solid. Did the wiggle checks, no problems. So we'll put this truck back together, clear all the codes out. Should be done. Um, yeah, little. Took a little more time than I expected, considering our readings changed when we just tested at the um, that sensor. Problem was at the ABS module at the other end of the end of the line. So. Just goes to show you, sometimes weird things can happen with electronics. So let's put it back together and do a final shot of the car not dinging. All right, final code scan. Let's clear all the DTCs here. And then start it up, drive it around, rescan everything. Well, CD is really. A <laughs> Internal error, that's what it says. Audio CD internal error. PCM is readiness incomplete. Alright. Right there. Oh no, service RSC now. Let's scan it for codes again. See what happened. The owner's like, uh oh. <laughs> Well, it only has one code right now. VIN mismatch. So, this thing, this ABS module, I'm sure needs to be programmed to the vehicle. Let's read fall code one more time. That's the only code stored. Keon engine off on demand self test. So if that dinger goes nuts every time you start the car and then it goes off, you need to program the module. There it is, B2900. And the owner brought his own launch tool, so maybe for bonus footage, we can see if his tool can do this programming. He's pretty excited to try it out. Okay, so the owner just recently bought this. What is this, a launch? CR919? Yeah, something like that. That's the Bluetooth, and this is the one you want to get. So you can do diagnostics not um, being tied to your DLC port. So in the ABS menu, we have three special functions, right? Kevin, we have uh, initialization sequence, 
service bleed, and programmable module installation. Hit that third one and see. Uh, yep, go ahead. Program to set new module configuration parameters. Please select yes if the original ABS module is still installed in the vehicle. Is it? I don't know if it's the original. I mean, this is the replacement, May right? Because I, I'm if it was the original, the VIN would match. I would agree with you. So, and we don't have the original. So we're gonna say no. Yep. Recovering module factory configuration parameters needed when the original module is unavailable. Select manual. The screen will display configuration parameters. This module manual input is needed. This parameter is obtained from network original database or dealer according to VIN. So hit manual. And here we have 3 by 4, so 12, actually more, parameters that we need to look up. Now where do we look these up? You have to go to Ford Motorcraft uh, service website, and this is actually available for free, you don't need a subscription, as built data. Let's find that online and type it into the scanner. So this link is not easy to find. You have to go to free resources, quick guides. We don't care about COVID-19 right now. We care about as built data. So now we'll put in the VIN and then they'll give us numbers to put in the scanner. All right, so we typed in the VIN and we can either download the file. There's PCM numbers and then BCE modules. These are all the other codes. And we're looking for codes that start with two, uh, 760, 010, 203, 04, 5, and 6. So scroll down. Here they are. 760. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. These are zeros. 16, 17 slots to enter. And this is where the owner can go to town and type all these numbers in. I'll zoom in so it's easy to see and he'll just copy and paste them. Alright, the owner said he put in all of all of the numbers. Okay. And the last one, did it ask for the last one? Yeah. No, click OK, see what happens. Turn the switch to off. Okay. Install new module, click OK. Turn the key on. Okay. Cross your fingers. Set, turn it off. Okay. Turn it on again. <laughs> Click OK. Module configuration completed. Okay. Okay, now back out. It worked. How do you know it worked? <laughs> well, the ABS light's gone. <coughs> it was always on in traction control. Okay, so back out. Uh, read fault code. Do that key on engine off test. Well worth the money. There you go. <laughs> well, what was this, on, under 500 bucks on Amazon? Uh, I think it was uh, 450 I paid okay. for it. Okay. There are no DTCs. <laughs> <laughs> That's a happy owner right there. Ooh. He's going to be falling asleep with no dingers on the way home. <laughs> so that looks good. Now just back out and back out again to the home screen. Yep, yep, yeah, one more time. Okay, right, they keep going. And do health report. So we'll scan all the modules for codes now and make sure there's no other. Yep, ABS is good. Look how fast the thing is. Yeah, it works well. Buy it. I think, uh, yep. Well, Black Friday. This video probably won't come out before Thanksgiving, but How the PCM. Yep. So the PCM is just set readiness not complete. Oh, we had the, the battery disconnected. Yep. Classic. Get, yep. Okay. Shut the key off. Disconnect your scanner, and should be good to go, Kevin. Woot. <laughs> nice. Woot. That's what I say. Big time. Sweet. No more. No Uh-oh, so the owner made it about half a mile down the gravel lane. What happened, Kevin? ABS light? Popped it back on. Dingy, yep. all the dingers and stuff. Yep. He scanned it for codes, and we have C109520 pump motor circuit fault. Hmm. So, completely separate issue. Now that the module's programmed correctly and everything else is good, it ran a check for the pump motor and... That failed. So let's look that code up in service info, see what that all entails, 
Uh, it could be the ABS module has been offline for how many years now? God, I don't know. I don't know. Like three years? At, at least. It's something seized up and it's a used module, right? I'm it's assuming. probably from a junkyard. I'm assuming. So this problem was likely built in by the previous shop who was doing the parts cannon and unfortunately we don't have the original ABS module. So let's, uh, let's look this code up and see if it also needs an ABS module. Alright, so C1095 is ABS hydraulic pump motor circuit failure. Go to pinpoint test C. Right there. Fuse battery voltage for the hydraulic pump supply ABS module, 40 amp fuse. Short to voltage or ground is detected if a locked up pump motor is detected or if there is an internal failure of the ABS module, the C1095 will be set. So they want you to basically is the ABS pump motor running all the time? No. Active command. Does the ABS pump motor run for approximately two seconds? We can try that. It probably won't run. Check the pump motor voltage supply to the ABS module. It's a fat pin. Brown and red wire. Harness side and ground. 40 amp fuse, and then the ground, you know, we can check that, pretty easy. Maybe put in a bright test light, do the bi-directional test, and, I mean, that should be a constant power, constant ground. <clears throat> Install a new HCU, hydraulic control unit. That's the last step here. So basically, powers and grounds, and hydraulic control unit. So let's do a quick check, and... Uh, my gut feeling is this thing will need a new hydraulic, you know, assembly ABS module. All right, Kevin's gonna hit the bi-directional control hydraulic pump motor. So click on. Nothing, right? Yep, I was just on the wrong. The ground wire is on the opposite side of the connector. So bright lights there, and on the second top pin, also bright lights. So confirm nothing's wrong with our fuses or powers and grounds. That's it, Kevin. You do need an ABS module. Yes, I do. And you also you already know how to program it. Yeah, I do. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, owner will take it from here.